Aaron Lewis from Liberty Regret Newell Fleet here with Tommy LaCour here from Tommy Hello everyone, welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast. And today we have some prep baseball talk uh, with our uh, good buddy Kevin Mulder from Prep Baseball Report. Kevin, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good, doing good. And as always, uh, Prep Baseball Talk is powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. We got our first fall ball tourney coming up this weekend. Uh, some good stuff. Uh, we're going to be announcing our Super 7 Scholarship Award winner this weekend, Kevin. So Very cool. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it was interesting reading the essays from uh, 14-year-old kids. You know, uh, I should say kids, you know, guys, uh, young yeah. men. We'll put it that way. Um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, so... We're, you know, we're, we're looking forward to doing it again next year and, and uh, keeping this thing rolling. It's, it, was, it was a lot of fun, Game 7. It's a way we can, you know, give something back. We enjoy the community. And I think it's interesting that we give it a little bit uh, when we're doing our live uh, stream of the championship games. We're talking these players are there. We see these players playing and, and how they're impacting their teams. I think it's very interesting. Very cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And there was some good kids, man. You can tell by their writing and whatnot. They, they, there was some, uh, a, a lot of thought put into these, so I, I was very pleased for them. So let's talk a little bit. The 2025 class uh, rankings came out, and what we mean by that is players in the 2025 class. Uh, Kevin does a lot of scouting uh, in the state of Missouri. That's what his role is with prep baseball reports. So Kevin, give them a little taste of what this means as far as your role as the scouting director. Yeah. Um, you know, my job, uh, is to basically cover the state of Missouri. I focus on, on all the classes. I probably lean a little more heavily on the senior and junior class. Uh, and then as the spring approaches, I, I really dive into the sophomores uh, because that's the group that comes with us to the future games. Um, and then I get I get to know some of the freshmen. Um, they start to come into events uh, this fall and, uh, you know, there'll be a handful of them. Uh, you know, we just did the 25 class, which means they were freshmen last year and some of these guys uh, were on the varsity team as freshmen and had big roles. So, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. You, you learn a, a lot about each class uh, as each year goes on. So, you know, I probably know the most about the 23 class and the least amount about the 2026 class, just because there's less information and, and we don't watch them play when they're in, in middle school. Um, <laughs> so we, we see them in high school. Uh, but my job is basically just to help be a liaison between the player and the colleges. And, uh, you know, we, we run events, put them through workouts. Uh, I go out to high school games, um, you know, and other type of events and um, help promote the, uh, the players to the colleges. So, and that, that's, that's an interesting thing because we always talk about recruiting and recruiting is a big thing as far as whatnot. And, uh, you know, we're do we started our player spotlights and our first two, um, uh, yesterday was, uh, Jack Holobowski came out and Jack's a, a great kid, really enjoyed that conversation. He's committed and, uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, Carson McCaleb next week. Um, on the show and uh, two different situations where yeah. they're still working. One's still working at his, uh, you know, his recruitment process. The other is there. It's done. And he's looking forward to it. Just the communication level still working at his craft. Uh, talk to us about that kind of situation that you, that you see uh, with these types of kids, Kevin. Well, yeah, I think it's important for, one to realize they're going to have a little bit different path. I like to say everyone needs to run their race. You're going to see as you know, when we highlight these 2025s, 
Um, you know, I believe there's about 14 of them committed right now. Um, th- and that's great. Um, but that doesn't mean um, that the guys that are uncommitted aren't really good players. They might even be the best player in the class. Um, it, everyone's going to have a bit, a little bit different timeline. And, you know, um, that that's important to remember. And uh, especially in high school, they're going to see, you're going to see massive jumps in uh, physical ability, uh, weight gain, velocity gain, um, you know, so these kids change in a hurry. And I, I'll be the first one to admit that, you know, I'll put, we put out these rankings in the fall and there'll be a wreck come, uh, you know, February and March because these guys change so quickly. Um, you know, mo- a lot of these kids are going to put on 10 pounds of muscle, uh, grow a couple inches and be a completely different player, um, you know, come next high school season. So uh, these change in a hurry, uh, you know, so it's it's a nice reference point, but it's not the end all be all. And I love that th- that thought process. And uh, last thing in this real quick, and we're, we're going to start because we talk, we're going to catch up on that 14 commitments there just because I think it's interesting. Most of these kids, do they understand and how do you uh, help them understand, look, w- I want to develop the relationship. How does that work, that bonding? And I know you have those, the windows of the events really to kind of begin to develop that. And, uh, how do they, you know, do they understand the resource potential in that respect? Sometimes, especially as maybe even a sophomore. Yeah, um, the young guys start to learn about it because they'll they'll hear about the future games and and often they want to come to that event because it's the it is literally the number one um, recruiting event in the country. Uh, so it's. It's a it's a really big deal. So guys will come to events to try to to make that team for Missouri, um, you know. But you know, I, I spend a lot of time. Uh, like we had the battle for the arch coming up at the end of this month, and that's an event that is uh, you know specifically designed for the unsigned or uncommitted uh, senior, and then we mix in some juniors there as well. Uh, but I, I will spend a lot of time on uncommitted players uh, that are older guys to help them. You know, truth be told, um, you know, the guys at the top of the list often don't need a ton of assistance. Uh, although I will say, you know, it, it's just yeah. it's just a little bit different for each kid. Like Ty Thompson, who's the number one player in the 2025 class, uh, committed to Tennessee. He came with us to the Junior Future Games. You know, so he's heading into his freshman year of high school um, and had an unbelievable junior future games, uh, talked to the University of Tennessee. They came out to watch him play at the event. Um, on the way home, visited campus, um, coming back from Georgia, back to, to Jeff City, um, or I mean Columbia, sorry and uh ends up committing within you know three four weeks later so you know we we certainly helped and played a role in that but ty thompson would have certainly found his way with without us but we we do assist and in you know in that manner and then you know you you look at a senior um who might be uncommitted well uh you know the battle for the arch is coached by some of the local junior colleges um, you know, we'll, we'll have a decent group of colleges out there and we'll kind of help get them in touch and get exposures. We, we certainly don't hand out the scholarships. Uh, the player has to earn those. We just try to give them a platform, uh, you know, to, to get as much exposure as possible. There you go. So let's start with this 2025 class. And I thought the, you know, and you mentioned it uh, at the top of that discussion there, it's. It, I think in the in the top twenty five uh, names on this list, fourteen of these kids have already committed to. And you know, here's the other part of this. And I know this sounds strange, but this is kind of the 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 talent level that's in this class. These fourteen commits, they're all Power Five conference teams. 
Yes, with the exception of Wyatt Vincent, who's going to Missouri State, who, you know, obviously is a great program, many regional, you know, we're in a regional finals this year, uh, you know, super regionals and went to the College World Series a while back. So th that's nearly a power five type situation. Um, and he's staying close so yeah. to home too, right? And that's his hometown. So that's also great to see. Um, you know, personally, I, I love it when guys keep it in state when possible. I'm not saying that it's it's not a great option. Uh, you know, we have some Tennessees and Arkansas and Oklahomas on this list as well. Kansas, um, you know, th those are great, great opportunities as well. Um, you know, and a lot of those coaches have ties to Missouri. Um but it is fun when you get to, to see a kid um, stay in state or nearby and and uh, make it easy uh, for everyone to watch him play. I love the fact of seeing these, like, um, here's two kids that uh, I remember handing, um, Justin was there, I remember handing Riker Benz, I think he was 11U. I think it was 11U at a game, yeah, it was 11 or 12 at the Game 7 tournament, it was over at Ellisville. He was our uh, top award winner uh, for uh, for that particular event. Uh, we spotlighted that age group. He was playing with the St. Louis Dynamite. Gavin Richards was on that team. And uh, so I've been watching him for a long time. He's a great player, a good kid, good family. And, uh, so, and then the other opportunity – both Gavin and, and Riker, we had them on this in the studio. They were our initial player spotlight uh, guys. They, we had them on. You, you picked two good ones. Right? And it wasn't yeah. long after that. I think it was a year after they both, uh, you know, committed to Oklahoma. And I was like, I'm very happy. I still get to see them uh, play and whatnot and watching these kids grow. So, that to me is really the fun part of this watching. I mean, you remember these kids at 11 U, you know, banging around and whatnot. And here they are uh, in the yeah. uh, top 20 of their class in the state. Really, really. And it's not just good baseball players, but you've met these kids. They're good kids, aren't they? Yeah. Um, those two in particular, they came with us to junior future game. So I got a chance to be in the dugout and, um, you know, coach them a little bit. Yeah, they are good kids. And, you know, what I like to remind these guys at this age in particular, um, you know, what all this means is they're at the top or towards the top of the heap uh, at this age. None of them, not one of them, is good enough to go play at Oklahoma or Mizzou or, you know, Tennessee or Arkansas or wherever and start for those guys today. Uh, you know, they, they got to get a lot better over the next four years uh, to be able to, to do that. So the hard work is really just beginning for those guys, but they they have a heck of a uh, head start on uh, things and, um, you know, super talented and uh, are in a great spot, uh, you know, for their age. And not only that, I love the fact that when you look at these two guys, um, Gavin, over at St. Dominic, he's going to have a good opportunity to make another run. They got a good, solid team high school wise. Um, Riker Benz is at uh, Viani, and they are they they got a loaded class there. So you're looking at um, a couple of guys that we're going to watch high school. Their, their their teams are going to compete for the next few years before they get to college and an opportunity maybe to win a state championship. Yeah. Um... It, absolutely. They're, um, you know, obviously a number of these guys will win state championships over the next couple of years. Um, <laughs> we, we've talked about Liberty North uh, uh, even a year or two ago about them being one of the next teams up. And, you know, they won it this year. And, you know, Viani is certainly uh, stacking up some young, talented players in their program. And, um it wouldn't sh shock me at all to see them uh, heavily in the mix for a state championship here in, in probably two years, possibly next year. 
You know, Kevin, we've talked a lot, you know, and I'm looking at the committed guys right now. We're going to get to some uncommitted guys and talk here in just a second. But one, there's a few names that stood out to me that aren't, you know, the big schools as far as what we've talked about over the past little bit, you know, the Rock Bridge, the Liberty Norse and all that. Uh, but here's a young man. I got to see him play. Uh, they, they were in the uh, GAC Classic uh, this last year where we were out at uh, Lindenwood. And that is uh, Adam Kilburn uh, out of Oakville, Oakville right-handed pitcher. He's committed to Tennessee. Oakville was a good baseball team. They had a solid high school uh, team there, and he was a big part of that. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, do you know much about Adam there as far as Oakville? Kid? Yeah, uh, they're especially good when Adam's pitching. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, he's super talented, athletic kid, um, plays quarterback on the football team as well. Um, but yeah, good, good athlete, really live arm, um, saw him, um, in the winter time at the gamer scout day, um, at the time was upper eighties and just kind of has, uh, you know, a real upside. That's pretty easy to see when you watch him throw. Um, most people would kind of have that opinion. I went out and watched him this spring, um, in one of Oakville's games at Oakville, and he struck out, I believe it was 16, 15 or 16 guys, and uh, was completely dominant. So, uh, and, and showed the same stuff that he showed in the winter, was kind of in that 86, 89 range, and had a really good breaking ball to go with it, and just kind of has some natural deception there, and just a swing and miss stuff, and, uh, you know, completely dominant. So that's a that's going to be one of the big arms in, in the class and is going to be a, uh, a fun one to follow over the next three years, three yeah. seasons. I, and I'm going to go down here. Uh, here's another one. Um, Chase Porter from Kearney. Um, you know, not somebody that's just in the mainstream and whatnot. Talk a little bit about Chase there. Chase was one of the uh, few kids in this class that got to come to the future games, which is a pretty um, big deal. He played for the select team, which is uh, um, kind of a wild card team. Um, a lot of Kansas kids and then some kids that, um, you know, from some of the states that may, don't have PBR, like Idaho or West Virginia, things like that. Um Chase can really run. He's a 6'4 runner. He is one of the fastest kids in the state. Um, you know, I really wish we could get Sebastian Norman, Chase Porter, and Jackson Carter and line them all up and, and have them run a 60 or whatever. Uh, that would be a fun race because they're all, they're all right there with each other. And uh, But Chase has a, a chance to be a good one, performed really well at the future games, um, kind of an upside guy that can – that can really run. So it's going to be fun to watch him. Uh, Car Carney, so he's up uh, just north of Kansas City uh, is where he's located um, on the other side of the state. There you go. Last one here that just, I, I met this young man. I really liked him. He's a personable kid. Uh, coming off a, a freshman year where he started um, small school. But uh, Lucas Weetholder, uh, Father Tolton Catholic, he's he's a good ball player. Yes, uh, those guys were at the state tournament um, this year. Um, got a chance to see him there and at a couple of our events. Lucas is just a great, just an all-around good athlete. He's kind of the wiry, strong frame you see uh, in some of these young guys. You know, it's not completely filled out yet at this point, but – He's 6'2 and kind of 160, 165-ish. Um, so he's kind of had that long, athletic, wiry frame that's going to continue to fill out. But, you know, he runs okay. He uh, hits for some power. He can drive the ball. He's got a really good throwing arm, uh, and he can play shortstop. So he's going to be an exciting talent to watch. And I look for things to get a tick better each year in terms of, you know, I think he's going to run a little better. I think he's going to hit a little better, feel better in terms of, uh, you know, how hard the ball is coming off the bat, his ball carrying across the infield. But it, all the tools are there uh, for him to, to be a really high-end player. I love that. 
and another kid that started as a freshman on his varsity team, which tells you not only does he have tools, he has a feel for the game uh, because you have to have more than tools to start as a true freshman uh, on a varsity team, especially a good varsity team like Father Tolton was. Yeah, the, that's the thing. They were impactful. It's uh, it's like Leo Humbert at Francis Howell. You're on a good team, and you're still impactful. You're 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 not the bottom guy in there. You're you're part of the the juice that right. makes you know makes that engine run there. Yeah. <laughs> that's always what's interesting. Let's talk a little bit because uh, there's there's quite a few uncommitted players of note. Uh, the first one, and we've talked a little bit about this young man. But uh, Sebastian Norman, uh, a Glendale High School, and I want to bring this to bear because uh, you got Brooks Kettering down there uh, on that Glendale squad as well. That's that's a name I'm familiar with, a really good ball player. And this Sebastian, Nor- I think Glendale, you know, you're looking at that. Talk a little bit about Sebastian again there. Yeah, uh, well, Glendale's set up to have a nice season this year. Brooks Kettering, uh, before I get into Norman, is uh, – Great all-around ball player, just committed to SEMO, um, kind of a ball player type guy, coaches, you know, type guy, a guy that uh, can do a lot of different things, plays hard, pitches a little, can play multiple positions. You know, that's a, that's a good one there for Glendale. But Sebastian Norman um, is a little bit different type player. He's, uh, you know, got all the tools. Uh, he can really run. He's in the 6'4 class as a runner. He's super physical. Um, you know, there's more to hitting than exit velocity, but his exit velocity is about 100 miles per hour. That is <laughs> unbelievable for a, a, a sophomore. So that's really impressive. I shouldn't say unbelievable, uh, but it, it is really impressive because there is – there's only a handful of kids that age that can hit the ball that hard to the opposite field power alley, uh, which is, you know, kind of how you judge like raw power when kids get a little older, Guy players get older. Uh, you know, some guys have pole side pop. You know, they can only hit the ball out to the pole side. Uh, what really starts to stand out is when a kid can drive the ball out of the yard on a line to the opposite field power alley. That that means they got, you know, big boy power, and, and Sebastian already has that. Uh, so really athletic kid. Uh, also can get up on the mound, his upper 80s on the mound. Um, you know, and at this age, you don't pigeonhole guys, uh, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, but there's a lot to like and, and a lot of upside with uh, Sebastian Norman. I always think of this when I hear you say it. You know, it's like you you hear these guys. Kenley Jansen was a catcher and one of the top closers, you know, in the in MLB history. You know, so yeah, and you just say you don't pigeonhole these guys because you don't know in the major leagues where if they get that far, if they get that far, and they get into those positions, you really don't know, do you? No, no. There's so many stories of you know. Uh, Guy, like Carlos Martinez was originally signed by the Red Sox as a shortstop. Uh, you go back to Trevor Hoffman uh, was a positional player. Woody Williams, former Cardinal pitcher, was a shortstop. You know, there's so many. Uh, Jason Isringhausen was, you know, a failed car. Uh, you know, he, he kind of hit a, a wall as a catcher in the Cardinal system, but he had such a big arm and comes, a, you know, one of the greatest closers, uh, you know, in Cardinal history. So it's. Uh, you know, you hear that all the time or you hear stories like that, um, you know, so you, you don't you don't know at, at no. all. So you just you know, let it you go. Get a kid that town, you want to play it all and it'll sort itself out one day. You know, I know we've got, uh, you know, Ty Thompson and whatnot uh, up there at number one um, and all that. Leo Humbert always stands out. He's uncommitted right now, but I know he's got a lot of opportunities and whatnot. He's. He's got he's got the opportunity to pretty much play where he wants to. Am I wrong? Uh, he is sitting on multiple Power Five offers currently, and so, so you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that's 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 that is a luxury in certain respects. As long as he continues his upward swing, I mean, he's a young kid. He's still young. He's going to grow. 
Uh, he's going to get stronger. And if he were, if his work ethic is there, he's just going to get better. You know, I, I think this is a great example. Um, you know, Ty Thompson's committed, Jordan Martin's committed, and that's great. Sebastian Norman and Leo Humbert have plenty of, have had plenty of opportunities to commit. They're just choosing not to at this point, which I think is also great. I, I don't think there's – I like both sides of it. Um, they're young. They're sophomores. Um, they might not be able to drive at this point still. So, um, you know, there's nothing wrong – with waiting um and you know you're gonna change your mind things coaches change uh your mindset change so there's you want to be comfortable when you make this decision because it's most likely going to be the biggest decision to this point in each of those players lives in most cases so uh there's nothing wrong with taking your time you should not get sped up by the process uh, and you should try to enjoy it. I know it can be become stressful, um, but you do want to take the, you know, if you're in a position where you're starting to get recruited at any level, um, you know, there, there are some neat things going to see, uh, you know, the campus, getting to meet these coaches and, you know, taking visits and learning things from these coaches, even on the visits and even the ones you don't go to, you can, you can learn a lot um, from just going out watching their practices and, talking baseball with some of these coaches. I love that thought process because that didn't cross my mind in certain respects. I I've talked about it, but learning how to develop a, a relationship in some of those things with a, with a gentleman, maybe that you're not going to play for long-term, but yet still like as a person and you never know down the road that might turn into something different, right? That's right. Yeah. I like that thought. There's one kid here. Um, also, I want to talk. J.D. Dorman, uh, Viani kid, um, uncommitted up there. He's got big upside too, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, J.D., um, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Andrew Dumont um, in the kind of the trajectory he's in. Uh, Andrew committed to Tennessee last spring. Um I think uh, JD. Now he's JD's a two-way guy. Um, he can really catch. I really like his upside on the mound in particular. Um, so that's going to be a fun one to watch this spring over at Viani. Uh, but big upside has a real feel for pitching. Uh, is an out getter whether he's throwing 80 miles per hour or in the upper 80s as like he does. Um, so um, those are kind of the guys to watch out for. So he throws hard and he knows how to pitch. Uh, it's a, obviously a good combination. Uh, Carson Ramos uh, over at Timberland, um, he, he's kind of up there a little bit. He's up to, I think, 18, uh, I think it is, or 19, something like that. Um, he's going to be sitting behind uh, Carson McCaleb at Timberland, which I think is, is really good for him because I really enjoy talking to Carson. I think he's got a great head on his shoulders. He understands what he's trying to accomplish and if you're a player, I think at, at this age, learning how to develop that relationship to learn something from a veteran high school player, right? Yeah, a absolutely. And, um, you know, Carson's a super talented catcher, um, and, and he's a true catcher. Um, you know, he's you know probably not going to play shortstop. It, you know, he, he is going to catch. He can really receive. He's got a good throwing arm, physical frame. Um, yeah, so Carson – uh, and obviously Timberland has some really big arms, so they need some good catching depth and some talented catchers. Um, cause you have seen that a time or two in the area where, you know, there's the big arm and, uh, they don't have anyone that can catch them. Well, you know, Timberland has probably three big arms, uh, with, with Hatchman who's, you know, on team USA, uh, right now pitching, um, you got Jackson Yarberry um going to st louis university and the other mccaleb uh who's you know can be an upper 80s arm so you're gonna have that type of arms you got to have some catching to to be able to handle those type of guys and uh, you know carson will do a good job with those guys and just an fyi um as an umpire if you can <laughs> trust a catcher to catch an adam hatchman it's going to be a long day i mean 
Yeah, they got to keep you safe. You got to feel comfortable <laughs> back there. So you do because, man, you know, ninety-five to ninety-eight—that's scary, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> you don't want to get hit in the arm or the chest. You know, I mean, I understand we're all wearing protective gear to an extent, but I've been hit in the hand by upper 80s, and it's not fun. And uh, no. it'll, make, it'll make you flinch. <laughs> yeah, I bet so. Uh, last couple guys here, and we'll, we'll finish up, Kevin. Uh, but... Uh, Caleb Duncan, here's another uh, kid that's maybe off the radar. You've talked about Kennett, but he's down there at Kennett High School. Um, I think you've got him at number 31. Yeah, Caleb Duncan. Uh, talk a little bit about him. Yeah, Caleb, uh, coming from that strong Kennett program, um, <clears throat> and is another Duncan in the pipe on the, they've had a couple Duncans uh, roll through there. Um, Strong catcher uh, with a with a pretty good throwing arm and um, a big bat. Strong physical kid has a chance to dri- or can um, drive the ball to all fields and um, you know already was uh, on the varsity team uh, last year and uh, you know it was you know wasn't the star of the team but a, a piece of the puzzle and uh, on on a really strong team and so this year uh, with some of those guys moving on. Um, you know, he'll be one of the more, uh, one of the bigger pieces on that ball club this year. Uh, last kind of player I want to look at because it's a new school and we've talked a little bit about North Point, uh, but uh, down at number 51 is a young man by the name of Jack Cowling, shortstop there. And we've talked about this with a new program like they are. Here's a sophomore in that. He's up there a little bit. That that's what you need. You need these kind of pieces for a new program like that, right? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to going to my first North Point game and seeing their campus and just their field, and uh, you know, so that might happen this year. Uh, you know, they'll I, I guess have a junior class this year. Um, I believe so. I, yes, I believe. Um, you know, so it'll be fun. But Jack's a uh, Tall, lanky um, player. I think he's 6'4", 6'5". Um, he's got some upside. I, I like him a lot on the mound, uh, potentially as well. Uh, but stronger kid can drive the ball a little bit. Um, but it's going to be one to keep an eye on, in particular on the mound, I believe. Very good. Very good. Kevin Mulder, folks. Always a pleasure, man. Appreciate you dropping the knowledge. Absolutely, a lot of fun. We're gonna we're gonna see you this weekend. We'll be out at uh, Atkins Field in Columbia with the uh, upperclassmen, underclassmen games. Gonna have some fun there. Uh, so hey, make sure you tune in, watch some of these players that we're talking about. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. Kevin, thanks as always. Uh, appreciate it, buddy. My pleasure. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that dinger because that's what we do. We hit dingers. And uh, that'll get you all your notifications for upcoming episodes. And we appreciate you being with us. So all you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. And Kevin, you can take this one. Hitters. Hit them where they ain't. Exactly. We'll see you all next time.